one, two. All right, let me know if you guys can hear. Uh, the stream just decided it didn't like the RCP, so I had to unplug it. All right, hopefully this works. We're going to have to get special with it. All right, so we're just going to leave it like it is. Um, yeah, it's all of a sudden, it, it started, like, causing Ecamm to say it has an issue. So I just quickly unplugged it um, after I tried twice and just said, heck, I'll just use the uh, the um, Samsung Q2U. Hopefully the audio is good um, while we wait for Brother Marshall to catch us up. It's, it's a little weird, uh, not not able to <laughs> not able to do the sound effects or whatever but hey you know what we it's not necessary sometimes you got to do what you got to do you are awesome you are amazing you are the best and, and you remember you have <laughs> greatness inside of you. you you are awesome you are amazing you have greatness inside of you. As long as you can hear that, then we're good. <laughs> so, uh, no, what it is is it goes to teach you, like, make sure you have a backup and be mad flexible with it. So, like, if something happens, you can just, like, kick it and go with the flow. So, yeah, I mean, pretty incredible if you ask me. Um, we are waiting for Brother uh, Marshall to catch up. He said he was running, a like, a split second or he was fighting his camera or something. Um, let me double check and see what he said real quick. So cool. Uh, Marshall is on the way. He's he was uh, <laughs> it's funny. He's fighting his M50. So yeah. Um, all of a sudden, I. I couldn't really understand what happened. Um, it could have been a Big Sur update. It could have been this morning Zoom was being goofy. Uh, actually, it could have been this interface that Diane and I both were fighting, but I was testing this out for a review. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a no. So I actually ended up yanking this whole interface out. No longer have this plugged in. Everything is plugged directly into the machine. I'll troubleshoot it later. Not that big a deal. Um, main thing is we want to get in and get started. What's up, Keely? How you doing? Good to see you here. Uh, welcome to the pate, as we say. Um, quick reminders, everyone, while we're getting started and waiting for Brother Marshall to show up. A um, uh, couple things. Normally, in the beginning, you hear the beats and the beats are rolling. That's coming from docrock.live slash beats uh their question will always come up what type of equipment we are using and mostly everything is on the kit page if there's something that's not on there just feel free to email me or dm me and we will get it twisted that way um normally we are sending to multiple locales like we are sending it to restream today i did not i decided to keep it fully youtube just to see what happens and so far so good it's been working out and also, don't forget, if you want to get your tube buddy on and you haven't done so already, you can check out docrock.live slash tube buddy. This is going to be kind of important because tube buddy is what we use as a way to make sure all the videos are optimized and, you know, ret for distribution to make sure you're being found, make sure you're being seen. Tube buddy is our go to tool of choice to get that thing started. Mr. Andrew is here from London, English. How you doing, Andrew? Good to see you, brother. And uh, thank you for the lovely comment, you know, the other day. That was great. I got to see that the Wonder Twins are in the building. Good to see you guys here. 
Uh, thanks, Coach, for the drop. I'm, I'm going to have fun playing that when people say stuff. I can just hit it with one of these. You are awesome. <laughs> that is Coach. Thanks, Coach. It's so dope. I love it. I love it. I, I've been meaning to chop it up and put it in the in the roadcaster, but yeah, um, more likely what I'll probably end up doing is just do a uh, factory reset of the roadcaster just to make sure it's all good, make sure it's all working. But yeah, you know it's cool. We end there. So today we're going to be talking about um, talking with Marshall about goal setting and and planning um, because learn some really cool stuff over the last couple of weeks and doing vlogmas and, you know, getting everybody together to do their streams. Uh, we had a fantastic stream yesterday with Rob and we were talking about community building and um, yeah, some pretty incredible questions came up there as far as like dealing with situations like sub for sub and things like that. And of course, very important you guys all remember that that is an absolute no no we do not want to do that that will mess up your channel in the worst way uh, make sure you absolutely never get yourself involved in these weird sub for sub parties they are not a good look um so basically what happens like you know I, maybe people hear us say don't do it and they don't really understand why we say don't do it so i'll explain it real quick in case you're new around these parts um what happens is, first of all, all the practices of attempting to, say, circumvent the YouTube algorithm you should just stop right away. You can't beat the algorithm. It's not that important. Um, you know, even people that are trying to game the algorithm with their content and stuff like that, it, it really can't be done. Like, it's, it's a very impossible thing to do. They have so many programmers sit in their design to constantly tweak the algorithm to make sure that it can be gamed. The reason why they do that is they want to give the best experience for their customers, which in case is their advertisers, right? So, for instance, if you were watching one of my streams and I was talking about, you know, uh, being here in Hawaii, it's quite possible that the Disney Aulani, which is a very swanky Disney-oriented hotel here, would put advertisements on that video to sort of entice you to come to Hawaii. So Disney Aulani would not want their commercial to be on a stream where somebody was coaching someone to do something nefarious or to you know find some way to cheat the system or do something say unfamily friendly right so youtube's algorithm is designed to make sure that the advertisers match the content you see so it'd be very important for instance i doubt seriously they would run a canon ad on my stream because <laughs> they would constantly hear me making fun of them so that's what the algorithm is there for so your attempts to game said algorithm thinking that YouTube is going to show your video more, that's not what it's really for. It's not necessarily about showing your video to the next person. It's about making sure that the advertisements are in alignment with everything else, right? So that's the first reason why you're going to have a hard time beating the algorithm. Uh, the second reason why you're going to have a hard time beating the algorithm is because there's so many people like designing it and working on it on a daily basis to ensure that it doesn't get twisted or, you know, come out crooked. So that's the other part that's going to mess you up. So, yeah, number one, just don't do it. Focus on creating good content. Focus on being present for your folks. Focus on, you know, getting better at your craft. That's really the best way to get it done. Um and and, and and that's why the sub for sub doesn't work because what happens is if they are auditing channels or checking your channels and they see, say you end up with like, you know, 50,000 subs, but you post a video, like 20 people watch it, that would be a prime example that it doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like, and that's how they would know right away that you're doing something goofball. So let me do that. I'm, I'm talking to Marshall. <laughs> so now the other thing you want to um, sort of look out for is as long as you're titling your stuff properly and using tags properly. Um, and that's something that we are working on uh, right now is nailing down a time for Andrew and Rob to come into the group 
And once they come into the group, they're going to talk to us about TubeBuddy and the SEO features. So that is also going to be pretty rad. Let me assign Brother Marsh to guest number one. And then let's see if we did it correctly. But Yes, there he is. Okay. Yeah, we can hear you fine. Look, I had to go ghetto and bust out my old Q2U because the Rodecaster Pro decided they didn't want to play nice today. So both no. of us were having random tech yeah. issues after millions of streams. <laughs> I know, right? It's just Bro, funny, just but that's the way tech morning. works. All right, yeah. for those of yeah, you who I don't know, uh, most people here are from the uh, Let's Get Live group or the Ecamm community, so you would know, my brother. If you are new here, first of all, press, uh, not press, see, I can't even speak English today. If you're new here, type new into the comments. Or if you're watching on the replay squad, put replay squad in the comments so that we know and we can make sure that we say hi and introduce ourselves. But next to me is my brother, Marshall Fox. I call him the incredible Mr. Fox. Sometimes I call him Foxy Brown. Sometimes I just call him Fox. I call him Marsh. <laughs> I call him all kind of random things, Blendian. I call him everything, <laughs> but That's my awesome. brother is here today because he is an amazing graphic designer. Um, you guys see his work in the shirts, in uh, the logos and things like that. But also, you know, he, he you'll see him pop in the group pretty much every day talking about what he's on his mission. And so I invited him on to talk a little bit about his mission. And yes, Sammy is correct. Marshall is a member of the Ecamm Jedi Council, which I just made up because I felt like it. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> What's up, brother Kurt? Yeah. Good to see you here. So um, Marshall, I wanted to have you on because you did something that I think is amazing. You made a very difficult decision, and we want to talk about that. And you picked extremely lofty goals, which I actually don't have a problem with, and some people do, so we want to talk about that. So first of all, uh, let's talk about your decision. Uh, go ahead, and you can explain in the case anybody missed it, but what did you decide to do on January 1? Yeah, January 1st, I decided to scale my design clientele all the way back and become a full-time content creator. So that was as of January 1st. I still have design clients that I'm working with. I'm still digging out, um, you know, to get them, them projects off my plate. And I still will take select the design clients, but only a few and at a very, very high price point. So, um, but as of January 1st, I said, I'm going to be a, a full-time content creator. And that's what I've been doing. And I think that is half the battle. I know it's a lot that goes into it, but you're just making that decision, like owning it, right? This is what I am. I'm a content creator and, and being at peace with that, um, you know, it's giving me a bit of confidence. Just like you said, I have some bluff goals, but I'm going all in. I'm not experimenting. I'm not experimenting with this thing. So I'm excited. I'm excited about this new ride. And it, you know, it's a thing, right? Being able to just make that executive decision and I, you know, honestly pull the band-aid off and go full force it requires a certain amount of gumption but you know it's funny like confidence with the plan will get you a lot farther than confidence with no plan or fear with the plan like you because you're hedging when you're hedging you're you know like you're just asking to get hurt. Like that's to tell when when I play football, right? When you decide to hit that hole, you got to hit it. If you hedge mm -hmm. hitting a hole, you will end up with a broken leg or something. You got to just like go in, right? It's one of those exactly. things. Yep. Um, enlarge my territory. Said that's what's up. Ready to watch this new journey, and then you uh, go. <laughs> Danielle <laughs> said, "Oh Lord, really?" <laughs> so and of course, of course, this is what Coach said. Let me tell you what Coach said. You are awesome. You are amazing. You are the best. And remember, you have greatness inside of you. I love Coach. Let's go. <laughs> coach is my dude, man. I absolutely <laughs> love Coach. And and so now the the idea, okay, first of all, what inspired you to want to become a full-time content creator? Yeah, absolutely. So for those who don't know me, um, I'm a graphic designer, a freelancer. I've been in this space for about four years, um, operating at a high level. At this point, I have over, I guess, 350 clients, and I serve authors, speakers, coaches, and consultants. 
And that has been my niche from the very beginning by the grace of God. And from a lot of hustle and hard work, I've been able to put 10,000 hours into my craft and um, have been a six figure earner since year one. And I see a lot of gaps in the graphic design space, especially amongst other black and brown graphic designers. There's just a lot of information that they don't have and they don't really see what su success looks like in this space. We're kind of represented. So there's $50 logos and uh, barbershop logos and cookout flyers and stuff like that. When there's a lot of talent out there, but it's just not being utilized in the right way. So I want to use, I want to give the game away in, 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 in many respects. I want to use the information and tools that I've been able to apply to my business to have a successful business and, and, um, and put my people on, you know? So um, I've been feeling a pull and a call into content creation over the past year because um, I rock with a guy named Eric Thomas. He goes by ET, the hip, the hip hop preacher. Um, he's actually a partner of mine. That's where the 120 comes from with my with my uh, my brand for the design studio. And he talks about the three eyes is information, income and impact. He says, get the information, use information to make the income and then use the income to make an impact. So I've done steps one and two. So now I'm feeling a pull into three and making an impact. I'm not a millionaire by any means, but I've done very well, uh, multi six figures every year. So. Um, now I'm, I'm just ready to give it out. Like, I don't want to keep it to myself and there's enough business out here for all of us to eat and eat well. So, um, I just see there's, there's a huge gap and a need for, um, type of information that I can provide. And there are other designers or agency owners that have courses and, and do content creation, but they all talk about how to scale to seven figures and build an agency. But I want to talk to the person who just wants to feed their family and maybe make six figures in this space and, like I said, eat well and maybe doesn't want to build a team and scale to seven figures, right? Maybe they just want to want to eat well and, and, and scale to uh, the six figures and be like a one man band. So that's who I'm speaking to. Nobody really is really speaking to them. So the majority Correct. of graphic designers that I know um, are struggling and then we don't have to. <laughs> All right. So we're going to ask uh, we're going to ask answer Danny's question in a second. But I'm going to tell you. I'm going to add something to this. This is my doc wisdom for you. When you pull off what you pull off, I don't want you to take the seven figure out. Not because you need no, it, <laughs> but because if you are dope with six and six makes you happy and, you know, every day you get up and you're like, I made it, mom, look at me, right? I want you to still get the seven because you can give that last seven away. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? Do you know yeah. what it what it would feel like to know that every day you get up, you're dropping another fifty on somebody, another fifty. And yeah. I don't mean fifty dollars. I mean yeah, like, yeah, be able yeah. to wake up, see some up and coming content creator, and be like, "Yo, here's a fifty thousand dollar grant. I need you to go take a topography class at such and such school." Oh, uh -huh. I, I see you got some skills. You over here painting these buildings and stuff. Before you get arrested, you know, here's a scholarship to to University of San Francisco art program or something like that. Like that's the kind of stuff that I live for. Like I say, um, one of my goals is to impact a billion people. Well, I can't do it by myself, right? So mm -hmm. I'm trying to enlist yeah. all of y'all, which is the reason why um, you missed this. You wasn't at the stream yesterday, but um, we uh, Let's Get Live family is about, uh, remember MLM, how you would go to Amway and you draw the circle mm -hmm. and then you got to draw the next two circle and then you build like a little joint, you come up where we're doing yeah. it backwards. We got the reverse triangle and we're doing multi-level giving instead of multi-level marketing. So after, you know, Marshall hook you up and get you to your six figures, I'm gonna need you to turn right back around and uh, uh, enlarge my territory and then go teach other people how to get their six figures and make them, you know what I'm saying? Like we're gonna do multi-level giving till we done touch the whole bunch of folks and then move, yeah. the, move the needle in that method. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I I, I don't feel like I've arrived or I've made it, but I know that I can teach the freshman class and those coming up behind me, like right now, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely. And I think it's important to do that. A lot of people think that they can't yeah. teach until they're the teacher, but we don't, I say it every time we don't learn some stuff from our kids or from our nieces and nephews or from the little young and down the block. Like we don't watch the video on the news where some kid did something dope and you'd be like, yeah, man, I, sh I should be doing that. I know better. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just got to be reminded because grown folks, sometimes we think we too smart. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It really would be. Yeah. So uh, Danny yeah. said she's curious why you're doing this because you love content creation more than design. 
No, no, no. It's not that I love it more than design, but I just feel, um, I feel, I see the need and I feel like I need to feel it <laughs> right now. And, you know, I just been feeling it in my spirit over the past year. And like I said, I still will do design, but for a very select few amount of clients and I'm, I get a lot of leads. So, you know, a lot of people reach out to me and I've built up such a demand where people just come in, they just continue to come in. So what I'm doing is I'm plugging those people in with the designers in my community. I have a community called Good to Goat. Um, it's about 200 designers in there right now and uh, have an application process for 120 certified designers. And if depending on what level they're on and what the client needs in their budget, I can kind of plug them in with the leads that I get for design. And I'll still take a couple here and there, but for the most part, I'm giving giving projects away. So my goal for this year is to give $100,000 worth of projects away to people in my yeah, network. Man. I'll get a 20% cut off of, off, of that, <laughs> off of that first project. Um, but everything going forward will be completely theirs. So I'm, I'm doing that as well. And I just feel like I can have more of an impact on the world at large by going this route and going all in on the content creation side versus trying to scale 120 to seven figures, which I could do as well. But I've been, I've been pondering that over the past couple of years. Like, do I scale out? Do I build my team? But the way no, my you, personality you'll, you'll is, still get there. Like you'll still get yeah, there, but yeah. you'll get I'm, there I'm, I'm doing dopeness in the middle. So I have See, that in the works. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. I don't know if you guys. So, are, I don't know if you guys are listening. As as Pastor Keith taught me to teach y'all. Hey, I don't know if y'all hear people in the back. Y'all don't hear me though. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how he said it. I forgot, Pastor Keith. Don't mess me up. Uh, the, y'all, y'all don't hear me though. Like, I, I'm, I'm doing the six now, and I want to get the seven, so I could just keep hustling and burn myself out to get the seven, or mm -hmm. I could teach a metric ton of folk to do it, peel a little bit off the top, still hit my seven slower, but make a bigger impact. That's what, that's what he said. We just smashed right. that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now, what we do in, in the typical, Pastor Keith told me, y'all got to let it marinate for a second. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sorry, that's a heavily East Coast statement, but it was funny. I was watching Keith <laughs> stream the other day, and his wife was, y'all hear me? Let that marinate, because I say that all the time. Yeah, so I let it it's, marinate. It's very important that you you absorb that mentality, family. I think you about to get there. Like, again, uh. Let's talk about your, wait, oh, hold on one second. Carmelita, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Carmen. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate you, Ma. Um, of course, Ecam is going to spell it out for us. <laughs> it's a pair of character dancing in the rain of confetti with his hat off saying, you are amazing. Uh, the coach don't look like that, Carmen. <laughs> thank you, Carmen. Anyway, I, I like to call Carmen Carmelita. That's what I call my little sister, Carmen. There we go. Now it pops up. Man, the, the internet is slow today. And thank you, Danny, for subscribing. She subscribed to your channel, so now you got next one. Um, tell them about thank your you. subscriber goals, because these are crazy, but I'm going to explain why it's crazy, but then why it's dope. Okay. <laughs> All right, y'all. We're going to marinate beforehand. Um, so my goal <laughs> is to get to... 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So I want to get to 1,000 by the end of this month, 5,000 by the end of next month, 10,000 by the end of March, which is the end of the quarter, and then 50,000 by the end of June, so which is the end of second quarter. Um, yeah, and I want to get to 100 by the end of the year. So I have about 100 videos planned, and it's all videos that I know and I've been working on for the past year, not like actively filming, but... Um, I've been listening to my people, y'all. I've been listening to my tribe, my herd. I call them the herd because, you know, the, my group is Good to Goat. Good to, to Goat, them right. From good to Goat, as in greatest of all time, as we say in the black community. Um, so my herd, they pose questions every day, and I'm listening. I'm listening. I answer the questions, but I'm also like, okay, this could be a video. This could be a video. This could be a video. And also, I'm linked up with people like Doc Rock, so I know I'll, I'll be able to get there. Um, you know, I'm signed up for TubeBuddy. I'm utilizing the tools that are available to me. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing that keyword research and, and whatnot. But for the most part, I've been listening to my people. And um, a lot of the things that I'm doing videos on, I initially thought I would put them in a course. But I'm like, nah, just give it away. I, I will have a course with a few videos, but the bulk of it is going right on the YouTubes. And I am from Baltimore. That's why I say it like that. So do I. YouTube. I call it the YouTubes, too. YouTube. So, 
So, so check this out. It's super funny. I, <laughs> Danny, you killing me. Danny said, be right back. She going to clubhouse. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, so th this is what I, I've been saying all along. Like I, I, I have to teach my course because I know I have to, like every one of my coaches have said, so you got to do it. All the mentors have said, you got to do it. But I've also said that if you are really like in a situation where you know you need this info and you have a mission and an impact, but you can't afford the course to hit me because I'll let you in. Right. You will be paying it back to somebody else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I don't feel I want to put the knowledge that's going to help people come up if their only block is cash. Right. Mm -hmm. As right. as a poor kid, bro, I know what that felt like. You know, yeah. can you imagine the days um, like when I started working in a restaurant as a little kid? You know, one of my my first or second jobs was working in a restaurant. And then I'm like, we got to throw away all this food. And I know there's people on my block that's starving. But at night, because they might get sued, the restaurant got to throw away all of this food. Right. Right. You know what I mean? So I would make like an extra little bag inside the trash can, inside of another mm -hmm. box, and I would throw whole oriented stuffs into said box, and then I come and get it. <laughs> I take it to the mm. hood. I got mm. in trouble for that. And I was like, yo, we throwing it in the trash trash. That's just ignorant. Like there's literally folks that's hungry. And they're like, Yeah, exactly. but we could get sued. I say none of my right. people got money to hire a lawyer to sue you. Ain't nobody trying to sue you. They just need to eat. You know? So when I gotta yep. go outside and throw away five pound bag of sourdough rolls, I'm like, yo, fam, that's just whack. <laughs> so I used yeah. to just keep them until I got in trouble and I had to stop doing it. And I was so mad by that. Like, that was so irritating to me. You know, end of the night, buffet over, I got to throw away about four pounds of scrimps. Come on, son. And, 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 wow. and throw away crab legs in Maryland, that's a cardinal sin. <laughs> that's our, right. that's our exactly. favorite food, right? Tell me you didn't get exactly. a bag, a three-pack of crabs with Old Bay seasoning, shake it up in the bag. You good. You just walk Bruh. around the street with Real a crab leg. That's why I just right? came back from that. You know I was on the road a little, maybe about 30 minutes ago when I was sending you those voice messages. That's yeah. why I was going to grab the crabs. <laughs> See? Bruh. I, I, dude, I grew up down the street from Captain White. So we used to go to Cat White's on our bikes and sit there and try to get hush puppies and a crab. You know, get a bag of hush puppies yeah. and a crab. And we was good. Like, that was just snack. Like, yeah. that's snack food if you lived in Del Marva area. Yeah. So yeah. the idea of just throwing it out was just kind of whack to me. So the reason why I said your goal is crazy, but then again, it's fire. I believe, okay, I, most people love to throw around the terms optimistic and pessimistic, but they don't understand there's a lot deeper conversation around optimism and pessimism. It's dope to be an optimist and everyone should be, right? Let's just say that. But Marshall is doing what I like to call a gentle optimism, right? There, He's putting some agency behind his optimism. He already said, I've been building this content for a minute, right? And even though it's not all filmed and edit yet, there's a plan. So mm -hmm. he has a methodology where he knows where he's going, right? Um, with an application like TubeBuddy properly set up, you can drip that content to a manner where it's fire and it won't take much time to get there. Because why, yes, there is tons of creators out there teaching what you teach. Number one, you're going to attract the tribe that no one else is teaching, mm -hmm. right? There's not a lot of creators that look like us that are doing that. Like if I started mm -hmm. a channel right now to do nothing but photography stuff, I believe in my heart of hearts, I could catch up to a Peter McKinnon just because I'm different than him. Like exactly. I, I know it. the majority of what he knows because I've been in the industry for a hot second, but I know that I'm going to come from a different angle. Like I'm mm -hmm. never going to come on YouTube and go, what's up everybody. And I hate watching other right. cats do that. Cause you're not Peter <laughs> dude. Peter done made that. That's him. He might not have invented it, but it's him now. Right? Mm -hmm. Like, if I roll up in here and be like, hey, 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 they be like, come on, dog, you can't steal that. So you got to do your own thing. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, and I like, that's why I love coaches, man. You're awesome so much. Like, a lot of people say you're awesome, but no one says it like Coach Frenchie. When Coach Frenchie says <laughs> it, it, it gives me the feels. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I appreciate yep. the fact that you understand there is some agency behind the optimism or a gentle mm -hmm. 
right? And there's yeah. a gentle optimism, just like there's the defensive pessimism where you're like, oh, I'm going to fail this test or whatever. But you know you don't put in that extra work or whatever. And, and, and then they, those are the guys that get the best grades, right? The guys that was whining mm -hmm. about how the test was hard. But they knew what yeah. they was doing because they used that, their pessimism to go put in that extra work to be ready to win. So uh -huh. you, you guys have to understand that. And I, I think, number one, I think you're going to nail it just because you have it. And the other thing that's crazy, let's just say you set your goal for 10000 and – you fail and you get eight, or you set your goal for a hundred thousand and you fail and get sixty. That's it. Y'all let that marinate. Look, I do that in my business. My, you know, my huh. revenue goals as well. You know, I set them super high. I think I talked to you offline about this. Um, I, I fell short last year, but I still did way more than I that I thought was really possible to be honest with you. So it's the same thing, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. we'll see what happens. And I have, you know, I feel like my office tour video once that's done, that's gonna get a million views. <laughs> I, I I feel bad. Um, like I don't want to be against anyone who chooses to do their business the way to do. I'm not against them. I'm just saying that's not my steez. My steez is. I will give it to you and you know inside of you if you can really afford to pay for it and you didn't or, you know, you just out here taking. Like, takers can't take but so much before they start to feel cheesy about taking. And you know how you know right. this? When people be at the buffet, like, packing their pockets with extra, what are they doing? They're looking around. Not even mm -hmm. about getting caught. They know what they're doing is shameful. You know, they know they're taking from somebody else. So when folks be trying to be greedy, like it does weigh on them. Just You know, there's a, there's some people that have a, a a chromosome missing that won't catch that. But for the most part, people that are taking more than they're giving, like they, they start to feel bad about it themselves and they'll eventually they like cave in. So I'm not afraid of them. And, and I love Linwell's uh, video the other day about don't be afraid of the takers. And in a nutshell, he said, a tree isn't afraid of how much fruit you're going to peel off of it because it's not afraid of the next season. Like, it knows the next season is grow some more fruit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God, that was fire. That was I can't, I can't hit the limb drop button because my Rollcaster Pro is unplugged. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, so let me check the comments real quick. Um, yeah. Why I saw Dr. That? I, I, just, I saw Dr. Um, Sunny creep in. I want to say hi to Dr. Sunny because I yeah. I hey, really Dr. Sunny, it. thanks so much. I just wanted to say, like, if you if you're subscribing to my channel right now, just know, look, I got some fire coming. So I have started what I'm calling a wake up wrap up series, and it's just to be honest, it's more for me than it is for my audience, but it is helping me getting get my view count up and uh, the watch hours and stuff like that. But it's more of like a, a daily video journal of sorts where I share. Um, some nuggets, but mostly findings, um, my thoughts, emotions, um, lessons in real time on a daily basis. And it's really for accountability. So I go live every morning at 444 in the morning um, right, Eastern time. Yeah, so exactly. Um, <laughs> Jay-Z. Yep. So um, I do that just to kind of wrap up uh, the day before and, you know, any lessons and thoughts that I may have and, and um, I do it more so to to establish a morning routine because I'm I've been a workaholic over the past four years and I have a wife and children who need to see me more. So with this new journey that I'm on, it's going to require a different type of dog, right? It's going to re re require a different type of uh, of drive, um, and it's not it's not easy. It hasn't been easy. And it's not going to be easy as I make the transition. So in doing that, I need to make sure I'm working on me and I'm, I'm staying centered every single day and I'm still being productive despite working on design stuff still, even though it's scaled back and working on my content. So that means I'll get up at 4 a.m. I do my prayer, devotion, meditation. I am a man of faith. I get get that. Um, I'll do that and then I'll go live. And once I'm done that, I'll do some reading, some planning, strategizing, and I'll work out. So I need to get all that stuff done for me first before i even get into the day before i start answering emails checking social media outside of youtube right um and then you know getting to work so that that's my plan that is the main reason i'm doing the wake up wrap up so if you look at it like this isn't youtube content marshall what is this this that's why so that that's going to happen every day and also your actual youtube type video so your your uh you know my favorite apps that i use for graphic design mac versus pc um then stuff about the business side of things like how to find clients um high paying clients 
uh, how does onboarding go, discovery calls, more like the business lifestyle and mindset aspects of design more so than, hey, how did this is how you do a logo, right? So that's something right. that I think will set me apart. Well, yeah, because anybody, I mean, there's a lot of channels teaching logos, right? Like Satori Graphics right. and, Will, and Will Peters, like they go in on logos all the time, right? So any, anybody can do that. So um, let me, first of all, I can't miss Elaine because I love my, myself some Elaine. She says, I can't even say here you're awesome without hearing coach in my head. And I can only hear James Riley's voice whenever someone says vlogmas. That is so true, ED. That is so true. Andrew said, good luck on your ambitions and your goals, Marshalls. I've seen a couple of your videos. It's great. We'll keep an eye on for sure. And that's, that's, thank you, Andrew. Like, really appreciate that, fam. Um, yeah, and, and Kim Booth just said your office looks real nice. That's cool. Uh, yes. Uh, uh oh, it's either you. either Katie or Caleb done showed up late, <laughs> so they fired. <laughs> uh, but you know, hey, Katie, and Caleb. that so it was really cool about your and this is dope. Like, which is right, right here is getting in the morning and doing that groove, right? And we I mentioned that to you yesterday, right? In in the, in our private conversation, I was like, you will find your groove. Like, it's yeah. going to take you a minute to get there, but hey, it's just yeah. like running, fam. It's just like running. Uh, yeah, I forgot who said it. It might have been Tim Ferriss. I totally forget, but it was a long time ago. The idea of if you say you, this year, right? Like everybody does the January. I'm fitting to work out. You got to come home and immediately change into your workout clothes and you may go to the gym. If you want to go in the morning, you got to get up and first thing you do mm -hmm. is put on them workout clothes. Because if you yep. don't, you're not in that mindset. And so the idea exactly. of what you're doing with your groove, getting up every day, doing your wake up wrap up, even if it's just for yourself and nobody's watching yeah. it, you're developing your groove. Uh, Miss D exactly. and I, our whole thing with Vlogmas was like, you know, the experts say if you have an established channel, it's going to ruin your channel. Yep. So what? I need to get myself back in the groove of rapid creation because I like, you know, my creation side of things because you get busy. You know, you get, quote unquote, YouTube burnout, blah, blah, blah. But doing Vlogmas every day. Ted is so lit. Thank you, brother. Happy New Year. I appreciate you, fam. Um, thank you for the super chat. Getting up every day to do those Vlogmas videos and grading, you know, people's videos and the wrap up and conversating with folks and and teaching, you know, what we taught over the last month, it helped me, like it helped me a lot. So I think that groove will just come for you. And bruh, like I I applaud you on your mission. And I can tell you one thing: after you pass five, the next five becomes easy. Yeah, I'm, then, I'm watching with you, man. Look, I'm, bruh, I'm taking notes. It's mind blowing. Like, <laughs> yo, I was catching some kind of feels yesterday because uh, Miss D posted in the Let's Get Live group that I was at like seven thousand, and I was like, bruh, like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really, I knew I was close. I mean, I was a couple out, but I didn't know that it was growing that fast. But then since then, like yesterday, it it's, I'm up to like seven thousand fifty three, and I'm averaging about seven hundred a month, which wow. is mind-blowing to me because yeah. this time last year i was stuck at 2500 going come on two buddy let's get it you know because two buddy helped it yeah. changed my life bro it, it, it helped you figure yeah. out what's the right method so somebody had mentioned about um what if you're doing it wrong and i was like well that was me right i was literally running 100 miles an hour the wrong direction thank you uh, Katie Caleb <laughs> I, I didn't read who which one it is yet <laughs> but, but I was I was literally <laughs> running 100 miles an hour in the wrong direction and then so you just get to the wrong side faster that's it but once you learn how to go the right direction speed not necessarily important as long as you're going the right way uh, Rob says yeah he loves Satori v. I love Satori's voice I, I, I it's Katie <laughs> she fired. <laughs> okay. No, you're good, Katie. We're scared of you. Um, yeah, Satori's videos attract me just because I love his voice. Like, his voice is very calming. And, um, like, yeah, a lot of stuff he's teaching, like, I kind of know, but I still listen to it. Because you can mm -hmm. never know too much about your subject. Sometimes you have to be re-reminded. There are books that I read every year, no matter what. You know, some books I'm, like, ten times into a book. Right. Like uh, Stephen Pressfield's the uh, instead of the art of war, it's the war of art. 
Yeah. Like, yep. everybody and their mama should read that book. It's about 100 pages. You can finish it in lunch, but it helps you understand uh, your lizard brain or your monkey mind, whatever you want to call it. The resistance is what Steven calls it. Yep. The resistance yep. is all you. Like all of the yeah. things, this is where you guys hear me talk about all this stuff you've been taught by other folks or whatever. I learned that from Stephen Pressfield, and sadly, I learned it too late in life. I wish I had learned it earlier, but now I'm not wasting it. Like yeah, all of those wait. weird, weird things I'm you've been you. told about yourself from other folk. A lot of that, at some point, it's on you now. At some point, you mm-hmm. heard it and you accepted it. You decided to go that route. That's on you. At some point, you got to have it in you to be your not let the resistance tell you what to do and what not to do. Um, so I, we got this this idea of hitting this 100,000 and you're doing your, your wake up wrap ups and stuff. I did want to tell you real quick on your banner. Hold on, let me get back to your page. Um, I, knew, I'm, I need to update mine because in the process of talking to y'all, I figured I did some stuff wrong. But And I done changed it a million times in the past three days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me just go ahead and miss D you real quick. Don't major in the minor. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Like, it is important, but it's not the end-all, be-all. Right now, your content will outshine your banner. But the, the problem with your banner right now, and this is normal for designers, and this is what I did the exact same thing um, on my channel. I had the exact same problem. Uh, designers, we design banners, and we think we're cool, but it's not conducive to the mission. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add in this title somewhere. You can use, like, the, especially here in the middle. Uh, you can't see my mouse, but underneath the 120, um, mm-hmm. this is where you're going to put your text because uh, it does get squished or squezzed, as Ms. D says, when you're on mobile. So when you look mm-hmm. at this in the mobile, all you're going to see is, is basically this shelf right here this awesome lovely piece of handcrafted wood sign i don't know where you got that from yeah and i then, got that from the spot <laughs> called that's the aloha in uh why you're gonna see this swanky chair and you might see the edge of this computer like everything else gonna get cut off right so yeah. you're gonna want to put Yo, uh, Marshall Fox, I'm up in here every day in the morning time. I'm going to be doing design. And I'm teaching creators of color how to get to that next level, like whatever you want to put in here. Like you need to put that text and stuff in there. That's just, and it's a thing. And I know I got to fix mine too. But if you notice on mine, I do have everything squared in this little section because at least it shows up on mobile. Was the reason yeah. why I'm in here? So, so I'm gonna D- swap it real quick back to what it was, which probably was was a uh, a little more effective. So just let me know what you think. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna change it back. Yeah, just give me give me a second. Yeah, yeah I agree. Enlarge my territory, Ben. Uh, that's right. I knew this, Ben Reese. <laughs> that um. All right, I'm check, it, check it now. I don't know if it refreshes okay, refresh immediately, it. but yeah, it's, refresh it and see if it changes. Sometimes take them a second. Boom! Boom! There we go. Like, I like the color of the other style better, but I like this is in there. The only thing that I would say is I say this all the time. I know exactly what it is, and I'm not talking about the basketball team or a piece of gold or some whack chicken that will kill you. Most people don't know what nuggets are. So I guess our community, who you're talking to, might get it, but that would be the only thing that I would worry about. But other than that, like, it's What did you say? I missed it. You say most the, people what? That the, don't know what nuggets are. Oh, nuggets. Yeah, yeah like I get but it. My people know what they are. What they yeah, are, that's what so I'm that's saying. Cool. So that's what I'm saying. It's like I get it. You get it, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you should already know. Like if you if you who is meant for you should know. Okay, yeah, this yeah. is for me. This channel may be for me. There that's why I put. And I agree with game that. instead of like tools, even though yeah. it is on the left hand side. Yeah. Advice. No, a game. I'm giving you the game. Giving you game. All right, keep that. All right, I'm not. I'm gonna let that slide because I actually like that. I actually do. Actually, do like that. Um, so I like the colorway of the other one because it's just you. It's more you. So yeah. if you if you did this and combine it with that, like put all of this in white on your other background or something. What I mean, I don't have to tell you how to design, but I d- I'd like the depth of the other one better. Let's just put yeah. it that way. Okay. But yeah, yeah what I do mean, people. 
What do the people think? Yeah, um, pe- people in the audience, people in the audience, let us know which one you, you like better, the first one or the second yeah, one. I'm indecisive. That's why I changed it up so much. <laughs> oh, you, you heard? Hey, that's funny. Uh, Kurt said, Marshall, this is awesome content, mindset advice, the morning routine. Keep it. It's phenomenal. Saying congratulations because Thanks, Kurt. he's in the mindset with the real W. Correctly, Kurt. Correctly. That's my man, Kurt Nugget, as I like to call him, even though it's Nugent. And then Alicio has fully adopted my use of facts <laughs> for facts, which I love because that's my favorite. And some people are like, why are you posting fax machines? I'm like, because it's facts, yo. <laughs> it's just how it is. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. I mean, thank you, Sonny, for explaining to Carmelita the name of the book. That That is the bomb book. And again, if you can't find it at Amazon, snatch it up from your library. It's a shorty, but it's a good one. It's literally one of my favorite books, and I like to like to keep it in there. Um, Tanner So Lit, I used a uh, Streamlabs widget, which I'm not a fan of, um, but it does work. And so it's just a simple Streamlabs alert box widget. Um, I can show you how to do it if you need help. Um, I'm kind of not wanting to bother the twins because they're working on preview mode, but I would love them to have a built-in alert. <laughs> they have a tiny one in the bottom but um, that we can see, but I like to have one that y'all can see that isn't so gamer-centric. Like, unfortunately, all the Streamlabs stuff is extremely gamer-centric, so I just, yeah, I'm not a fan of it. But I use it because it helps you see um, Elicio wrote a paragraph. Um, working on video as we speak now. I've seen examples of a huge content creator who has no banner. Kelly Stamps is one of them. Uh, that's a good cop. You know, no. So yeah, here's a here's a problem, uh, and this is a fully explained. A lot of the top guys are doing all kind of myriad mistakes that are wrong. But if they got lucky and they're already there or they got skillfully already there, I hate to use lucky in that sense. If they skillfully got there, um, which is probably more the case for Kelly Stamps, she's awesome. She's kind of quirky and people fall in love with her for her quirkiness. Um, don't repeat it, though. You know what I'm saying? Like Babe Ruth, one of the best baseball players of all time, famously drank, smoked, did coke before every game. I don't think you should follow that just because he was great. He was an anomaly, right? Uh, now, yeah. first of all, you would get thrown out of the game. Uh, but, you know, second of all, not a good look. You know, Babe Ruth was was bad. I mean, he was dope. I mean, he was a fantastic ball player. But uh, the drinking and the drug use and the womanizing and all of that stuff, nah, you might not want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Tiger's the greatest uh, golfer of all time, but you might not want to follow some of his other practices. Got him busting the head with a nine iron from the Swedish lady. So right. yeah, just because they did it wrong, don't mean you should do it wrong too. Especially, <laughs> especially if you know better. I'm just saying. Like I think it's important to bring that up. All right, Mr. Andrew got a question. How do you get your live stream overlay with the iPad appearance for the split screen? That's not even an iPad, Andrew. That is my iMac. And I did design it as an overlay. Um, he and, means the on the left side, the two that we're oh, in, wearing. Oh, hey, I made that, bro. I downloaded a, a – I got to change it, though, because I'm not a fan of the skeuomorphic part. It kind of bothers me every time I look at it, but I've been too busy to mess with it. Um, skeuomorphic is how it has the glow, so you can tell mm-hmm. it's a real That's iPad. Eh, not a fan. Yeah. Um, but – yeah, I just basically went and got iPad vectors from um, I have Adobe subscription and Envato subscription. So I got it from one of those and then opened it up in Illustrator, cut the puka out. Sorry, cut the hole out and then built it that way. So the, the iMac and the iPads are from there. And on my other one, it is a MacBook Pro. Same thing. And it, this is an iPhone 12. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Andrew, I, I, I have a video on the channel about it, Andrew. I can help you with that. Um, you know it would be dope? Uh, just, ooh, Andrew just gave me a good idea. Wait, I just realized I still have snowmen in my thing. See, I got to change all of this. Since I got to rebuild it, I'm going to put the back of an A6400 and use that as the what? What? Come on. If any of y'all do this, Elicio, you're going to get in trouble. I said it first. <laughs> Don't steal my swag. I'm gonna put you, it. You, you say you wasn't going skill morphic, and now you you're doing that. Nah, with the AC, it'd just be cool to have a camera, and then you know you have me here. Never mind. <laughs> Let me stop tripping. <laughs> what was what was the first option? 
First option for what? Scott Forstall. Hey, I forgot what Enoch said. I don't know what e- what Enoch's asking me. I forgot what the the first option was. Oh, he was oh, asking what oh, the first band. I got was. it. I got it. Um, Marshall, I have to put it back in order for me to switch it. I got it. All right. Yeah. See, I'm with, I'm with you, Doctor Sunny. I was drawn to the first one too, but I like I like the fact that you're telling folks that it's the same time daily. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then okay. of course. Ecam is answering, not Ecam, Katie, it, which is the same thing. I mean, it's kind of synonymous, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, that I love. I love the the other banner too. Everybody seems to like that first one too. Um, ben, the book is called "The War of Art" by Stephen Pressfield. I will put a link in the chatty chat so that everybody can get it for the replay squad that watches this later. Um, yeah, so in the group, Paul, if you didn't see it already, Miss D, she put in a uh, template, like sort of guide that you can use, you know, and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, just notice the iPad border. See, that's the whole deal is to make it subtle and not scream at folks. You know what I mean? Like, and and again, you got to know your audience, too, because, like, us designer folks would be like, you know, don't use lobster and don't use Comic Sans and, yeah, kind of would stick to that 99%. But there might be the 1% where it works with your design. I'm sure the person that invented lobster didn't know that they would eventually become the bane of all designers. <laughs> but uh, there, there's probably a use case. And I'm not sure what that is, but it might exist. So uh, what we teach in LGL is learn the rules and then break them. But at least when you're breaking them, you know why you're breaking them. If that makes any sense. So, yeah. What uh, any hot words of advice you got for folks, Marsh? Like uh, what's 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 coming up in the quite near future? Um, Words of advice? Nah. I'm a new, I'm the new guy on the block. I, I'm even, I shouldn't even be on this channel with you, Doc. But I appreciate on, you for real. Um, <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm keeping it quiet right now, and I'm doing my wake up wrap ups and, I'm um, working on a, a career in review video that I'm gonna drop. It's gonna be super dope. Um, you know, just kind of, kind of chronicling my last four years as a graphic designer. Um, you know, from the beginning, it's gonna, it's gonna be dope, fast paced. Um, kind of showing the journey. Uh, and then I'm doing an office tour video. Got some stuff I'm working on for Ecamm, of course. Um, so, yeah, but other than that, nah. You know, I'm the new guy on the block, and my my philosophy may be a little cynical. I feel like since I'm so new on, new on YouTube, people don't believe me, you, you know? So I just got to realize that I'm, a, I, I'm at level one, and I'm going to get to the level I want to get to at, at some point. But as of right now, I'm kind of building my foundation. So um, I'm not just going to be on there giving advice like, yeah, you need to do this, you need to do that. It's like, bro. You got 200 subscribers. I'm not listening to you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm just I think enjoying it. And it's so journey. funny, Marshall, you bring that up because that's a huge mistake. Um, I I was helping a, a, a buddy of mine. Uh, I want to talk to you about something on this real quick. I'll come back to this in a second. I just yeah. want to remind you. Um, a buddy of mine uh, who's doing his show, and then in his show he's talking to athletes and whatnot, actors, and he's smoking cigars, right? And so he kept complaining to me that there's only like, you know, five to seven people show up to his stream. And then he hit me up the other day. He's like, yo, I was in this, this show the other day and I was talking to uh, this actor and there was only like five people watching. It turned out one of them was the head of marketing for Davidoff Cigars. He wants to do some kind of brand deal because he likes the show. And I'm like, yeah, that's how it works. You know what I'm saying? When, when Usher found Bieber, there's probably like, you know, three, four hundred subs. And the mm-hmm. usher was like, man, this little knucklehead head can sing his face off. And he's like, yeah. hey, let me uh, hit yeah. this kid up. So even, You're right. And then even when when they emailed him, uh, Justin's mom was like, man, I thought they was joking. And he's like, nah, mm-hmm. mom, this is usher. And she's like, come on, little kid, they just playing with you, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's it, according to the story, it took them a couple weeks to understand that because they just didn't get it. They didn't understand why. So what's happening if you are a person and you go to the tubes to get advice from someone and the person is bringing knowledge that you know you want to hear and maybe you just don't like the message because it's painful, but then you look at them and be like, oh, they only got X, Y, Z subs, so I'm going to ignore them, you messing up because you might not know. 
right? Yeah. Right? If some You're right. Some dude that comes on YouTube and he was like, oh, I'm going to show you how to do these shot techniques and with these shot techniques and this mindset, you can have games where you're hitting 50, 60, maybe even 80 points a game. And they're like, well, where'd you play? Oh, I just played a little high school ball in Italy. And then we just going to ignore him. You would just have ignored the Mamba story. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I mean, and I'm not a Lakers fan at all. I'm diehard Celtics fan. I was not a fan of Kobe as the as you know the ball player because it was opposite team. But you can't hate the game, son. So like the fact that you would shun something because he was like, "Well, this kid played basketball in college in Italy or high school in Italy. What do he know about ball?" You could have just ignored him. But if you look now, some of the greatest guys in the game all came from situations where they were ignored. And then some talent person saw them and says, nah, this person needs to be up. And then they become the greatest ever. So in your theme of, you know, good to go, that's the point. That is the absolute point. And we all know who was the last person picked in the draft in Tom Brady's draft class. Tom Brady. He was the last mm. Mr. Irrelevant pick number 387. And now look. <laughs> so I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You can't do that to yourself, fam. The, 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 the messenger always looks like Yoda. Unexpected. Not what you think. Yeah. I Ms. receive D, it, brother. Miss D explains it really, really well. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> yo, you stress the use yeah, out. They go. That's, she said he must be straight out of Baltimore. I said, how, how you know? <laughs> you know that's that's funny because that is so true. <laughs> be mo. Yeah. Oh, bro. Look, Doc, this has been fun, man. I got a roll. I appreciate. Yeah, me too. You we so off in the roll because we got Clubhouse right now. So. Oh snap! Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, cool. So thank everybody I, for uh, tuning in. And who else? you? I won't let you down. <laughs> yeah, and everybody make sure, you know, you, you do your do your subs to Marshall. Now, again, it's important, folks. If you're going to sub, you got to watch. You can't just sub so you can say, I sub, that helped. If right. you sub and you yeah. don't watch, then you're not helping. Yeah. You're actually causing yeah, yeah. trouble. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, let me just double check. We got another Celtics fan in here. Exactly. Tell him, Paul. Tell him, sees, sees for life. Uh, yeah, and then that's just how it's done, gang. Uh, this has been a quick one. Uh, we get in ready for our uh, our little clubhouse session with Mr. Bradley Vincent and others. And don't forget, we'll be back Saturday to put in some work, answer a bunch of questions. If you can't wait until Saturday, there is the beta stream on Thursday. We will be in the beta community for Ecamm uh, discussing stuff and getting everybody up to speeds and whatnot. Of course, live streams are always popping off in the Let's Get Live group. We have a live streaming habit over there, but that's the point. And then last but not least, if you really can't wait till Saturday, there's Friday. You can see Miss D. And then, you know, she would she would took and told you and volunteered you and get you straight, as we say. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh yeah man Marshall I'm 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 happy that you decided to jump in because I know you've been busy and I was like man this guy this guy got a lot more to offer so it's, it sucks to see him wrapped up in in the content yeah. work and then you have been also instrumental in helping folks like Alicio and Keith and the rest of us realize that you got to find a way to free that up so you can make a bigger impact and so yep. the fact that you were always talking about it it's super dope to see you be about it. And yeah. I know that this is just yeah. going to explode, fam. Like, I just, yeah. I can see it. Plus, we from round the way. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Li- you know yep. what I'm saying? From Liberty. Yeah. So, I know you get it. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that oh, sucks man. about B-more oh, is smelling that horseradish factory because that joint will hurt your face. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate you. I uh, can't do outros and make everything swanky today because I broke the Roadcaster Pro, but we'll fix that. And uh, we'll see you uh, Thursday. I appreciate you. Thank you, right, Marsh. Y'all. I'll see you over in Clubhouse. Yeah, peace. All right, gang. Aloha, no. Let's see if this is going to work.